Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we're talking about shop-made toys and choking hazards. Well, it's really not something you ever really want to think about, a child choking because of a toy that you've made in the shop. What turns out to be an heirloom could be a disaster. And I'm here to give you some information today to try to avoid such a disaster. Now, I had a viewer of mine, Jim, bring my attention to an organization in the States, the CPSC, or the Consumer Product Safety Commission. And what these guys do is they set a lot of standards, and one of the standards that they set is what is considered a choking hazard when it comes to products that are dealt or held or used by toddlers three years of age and under. And on their website, they provide specifications of a gauge that you can construct in order to test pieces of toys. It's actually the gauge that they use in order to determine what is or what is not a choking hazard. Now guys, I'm not here to get into regulations. I'm not here to get into laws. What I'm here to get into is to show you guys how to make one of these gauges for yourself, show you how to use it, and you can use it to gauge what kind of choking hazards your shop made toys may present. For me, as a designer and a toy maker here on the show, it's an important device for me to use uh, to try to avoid having pieces that are small enough to pose a choking hazard to a child. So let's head over to the bench and we'll get this project started. Well, in order to make this tester, you need a piece of stock to start off with. And this is just a piece of junk. It's an old piece of oak that I found up in the rack. Um, it's two inches by two inches, and it's just over three inches long. And the very first thing that I want to do here is I want to mark the center of this piece of stock. And once I get the center marked, we can head over to the drill press. Well, the next thing that you want to do is you want to drill a hole in your block of wood. You want to have this to be a through hole and we want it to be one and a quarter inches in diameter. So I have a inch and a quarter diameter Forstner bit and I'm going to drill straight down through the end of this uh, until we get our through hole. Now guys, please don't be a hero. Don't try to hold this with your hands because I promise you that drilling with this size of a drill bit, that is going to catch at some point in time and your little hands are not strong enough to hold this. Um, I've seen it time and time again, the drill press can create injuries just like any other tool in the shop, so please use a hand screw clamp, use a, a quick grip, use whatever you can to hold this without using your hands. So. Either way, done preaching now, uh, let's get this hole drilled. Well, this next step is completely optional. You don't need it, it is not necessary, but I've got some blemishes here in this piece of oak, some saw marks, that sort of thing. Here's where I used it as a drilling block. Um, so I have it mounted between centers here on the lathe, and I'm just gonna turn this around just to clean it up. And when you're done with that, if you chose this option, we can take this off and head back over to the bench. Well, the next thing that you're going to need is a piece of inch and a quarter diameter dowel. Now, truth be told, I didn't have any, so I turned a scrap piece of maple on the lathe to make some inch and a quarter dowel. And at one end, you need to cut it at a 45 degree angle. Now, guys, at this point, you want to take your turning here or your square with the hole in it, whichever you chose to do. And from the top, I've squared this edge here off, but from the top, 
we're going to place a mark in our uh, tube, we'll call it. We're going to place a mark at one inch down from the top edge of our lip here. And then what we want to do is take your dowel that you've cut at 45 degrees. We're going to apply a little bit of wood glue in here and we're going to spin it up inside and stop the dowel when it reaches that one inch mark. So that the point of your 45 degree angle is one inch below this top lip. And once you get that glued in place, you can set that aside and let it dry. And now to finish off our project over at the bandsaw, we're just going to use a miter fence and cut off the protruding dowel that is sticking out of our tube. And then we'll just give it a little bit of a sanding to finish it off, smooth off our edges, and there you go. Guys, this is it. And I know it doesn't look like much, but what this opening is right here with that inch and a quarter in diameter and that angled section down here at 45 degrees with the tip being one inch down from this top edge, this is a mechanical version um, that mimics the average size of a fully open throat of a three-year-old child or a toddler. And basically, this is what you want to use to gauge the small parts on your shop-made toys. So let me just demonstrate how this works. So essentially, this gauge is what you want to try to uh, test the pieces of your model or of your toy. So for example, I have here, it's a, it's a level bubble. It's no big deal. If you can fit this part into here completely, just like that, you have a choking hazard. It's as simple as that. Uh, if there's any way that this can come off of your toy, and guys, I'm gonna tell you, wood joints fail, glue joints fail. So assume that every piece can come off. Um, this here fits in our gauge of a toddler's throat. This is a choking hazard. So you may want to maybe think about your design. If you're putting something on that is this size, is there a way that you could increase its diameter? Is there a way that you could increase its length uh, to make it so that it is not so small? Now for something, say here with this cigarette lighter, um, check that out. There's no way that I could put this in here and have it fit completely in that cavity. Therefore, this part, for all intents and purposes, is not considered a choking hazard. But guys, anything could be. Even this here, while it doesn't fit in this way, what if it's compressed? Does it fit? Well, you know what? That one's borderline. That one's borderline. It's sticking up just a tiny little bit. Uh, but don't forget here that this is wood. There's no flex in this wood, and there would be flex in a child's throat. So that there, for me, I would consider that a choking hazard, and I would try to do something to uh, to alleviate that hazard, make it a little longer maybe, maybe a little uh, bigger in diameter, as I said, with the uh, level bubble. Either way, guys, this gauge can help you to realize ahead of time whether or not you have a choking hazard. So, you can make one like this, but I can tell you right now that our friend Jim that sent me over this information from the website also went to the extent of making this scale drawing, and it is spectacular. Uh, he did all of this layout for us, sent this to me and I will be putting this up on the website. So if you're interested in this diagram, uh, you can get it free of charge. Just go to my website under the free pattern section and I will have this uploaded. Um, as well, Jim has gone the added extra mile here, guys, and he has created an STL file for a 3D printer. 
uh, which mimics exactly what we just made. Now, mine's a little longer and it's a little uh, skinnier, but the interior dimension, which is the important part, is exactly the same as this, which is exactly the same as this drawing, which is exactly the same as uh, what is placed on the website from the Products Commission. So if you're interested in the 3D printing version of this for your shop, I will have that on the website as well. So feel free to grab that STL um, format file and uh, put it into your slicer and print yourself one of these. But either way, guys, whether you do a 3D printed version, whether you do a wooden version, whether you make it pretty or not around the outside, that is neither here nor there. What's important is that if you're going to be making shop made toys or designing shop made toys, this is invaluable information and it could mean the difference between a child having a blast with a toy or a child having a tragedy with a toy. So. Make yourself one of these. And there you have it. A choke hazard gauge for making shop made toys or any toys for that matter. Guys, this is quite possibly one of the most simple, simple projects I have ever presented here on the show, but it is one of the most important. I've been making toys for a long time and I have to tell you that I never realized that there was a gauge out there that you could uh, check your parts to see if they were a hazard or not. So I want to thank Jim for bringing this to my attention. And while this is an American outfit that does this and I am Canadian, it really doesn't matter. I don't think the throat sizes are different between American children or Canadian children. So what's important is that you test these pieces um, both while you're designing and while you're making. Now, as I said earlier, guys, it doesn't matter. You should assume with shop made toys that every single piece that you put on that toy, every piece from the biggest to the smallest at some point in time is going to come off. Uh, glue joints fail, grains fail, toys split. They could drop it and hit it just right. There could be an internal fracture in that wood grain that you don't know about. Next thing you know, you've got a piece splintering off. So regardless of how careful you are with using this gauge and uh, testing your pieces while you're designing or while you're making, I cannot caution you enough that for starters, a, you make all of these toys at your own risk, and B, guys, please do not let the child play with these shop-made toys unattended. Children find very inventive ways to, de to destroy things and to take things apart, and shop-made toys are no different. And regardless of how sturdy you think that toy is, I guarantee you, Give it to a three-year-old and that three-year-old will find a way to break it or to break pieces off of it. So please make sure supervision with shop made toys at all times. And now you've got the extra tool in your arsenal to test your pieces, to be able to adjust them ahead of time, to try to avoid that choking hazard long before you ever let the child touch the toy or long before you actually make it. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I want to thank Jim for sending me such important information. I want to thank him so much for producing the drawing and the STL file for the 3D printer. As I said, I'm going to make all of those available on my website. That It's just great information, Jim, and I truly appreciate you sending it out to me so that I can bring it to the attention of the viewers of the show. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, you click that bell and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed today's content. I hope you're going to try this for yourself and that you're going to make one of these gauges so that you can test your homemade or shop made toys. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.